So we milked about 65 cows, give or take, uh, depending on the day, how many calvings we had, if we dried cows off. Uh, we have a total of about 150 head. So for that, we have another 10 to, 10 to 20 dry cows, and the rest are replacement heifers and calves. We raise all our own. It's basically a closed herd. We haven't imported any in quite a while. So basically our calves are on milk from zero to two months. From six months till around 23 to 24 months, they're, we call a heifer. Some of them like a kick. And uh, they're on silage. We usually breed them the first time around 13, or sorry, 14, 15 months. So they end up having around 23, 24 months, right around two years old. And from there, they're in production, and I don't know how old our oldest cow is, probably around 12 years old. So they have, basically, we aim for about one calf per year per cow. Between calvings, each cow has two months off. She's no milk, no, yeah, basically on her own in a pen with the others. They don't get the same feed. We feed them a lot less energy and protein. It's uh, comparable to uh, comparing uh, somebody that sits in front of a computer all day to an Olympic athlete. You just can't eat the same calories. <laughs> That's what one cow gets for the whole day, for 24 hours. This is, uh, they get five kilos of ground cracked corn, 3.2 kilos of uh, its proteins, minerals, salt, and a little bit of fat to help the cow. Then uh, right now we're feeding two different grass silages. We take four cuts a year on our alfalfa and grass fields. So this is our first cut. They get 12.3 kilos of first cut, 12.3 kilos of second cut. It just happens that there's more fiber in first cut, so we're mixing it with a little bit of second cut, which has more protein and energy and then they get 16.8 kilos of corn silage. It's gone through a chopper, everything's gone through a chopper. Everything's between half an inch and one inch long. So it's steady and it's all been fermented and harvested around 60, 65% moisture. So our nutritionist makes us a ration that's all balanced according to how much milk the cows are giving. And right now our ration is balanced at uh, 40 kilos of milk. So and when the silage changes, we'll sample our feed, know how much protein and energy there is, and then how much fiber there is. And sometimes it happens to be that if we're feeding like say a third or fourth cut, which has a lot less fiber in it, then we end up having a fifth pile here and we have to throw in some either dry hay that has very like a scratch or a pick to it, or some straw as fiber source. First thing we do, make sure all the teats are clean, no manure on them. Then we strip them out, dip them with an iodine dip, cover each tit, real good. <laughs> and then we do that for five cows, come back and put the milkers on. So the milk comes down through the pipeline, goes through there and comes out the other side. And at the same time, there's cold water being pumped through it and it goes through different veins in there to cool the milk and the filter has to go on before the plate cooler to ensure that nothing blocks the plate cooler because there are tiny little holes for the milk to go through. We change the filters before every milking and then once we're done milking we clean it off and put it back in for the wash mode. One of the other things to ensure uh, that the milk doesn't get mixed up and water doesn't go in the tank. We have a sensor on here that won't let us run the wash system when the pipe is connected to the tank. So then when the milk gets to the plant, the truck unloads, the milk all gets pasteurized before anything's done with it. Cheese, milk, doesn't matter what it is, it's all pasteurized and then how they process it 
<laughs> I don't know, I've never been in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Say they get mastitis, then we will treat them while we're milking them. We'll milk them out, treat them, put a double uh, red tape around their legs so they're ident identified that they can't go in the tank and their milk will be separated later on. Then when we're finished milking, we also enter it in the computer so that it's recorded there and that'll tell us in the parlor, it'll flash next time and it'll warn us that she's treated, she can't go in the tank. And then we also write it down on a whiteboard that that cow's out of the tank. So we have three ways of identifying cows that have been treated. And uh, we have to follow standard withdrawal procedures and do the actual withdrawal that's written on the medicine box. Otherwise, you end up with antibiotics in the milk and it's just not fun. And we don't want that. I have uh, one, actually two of my daughters have had reactions to penicillin and they drink this milk. So I have nothing to worry about. We follow all the rules and our products as safe as can be. <laughs>